It's race day here at Walt Disney World, and today I'm going to talk about the five things you don't want to forget if you're thinking about running a Disney race, especially the 5K. And in today's video, I'm not only going to tell you about those five things you don't want to forget, I'm also going to take you through the experience that I had with the Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend 2023 and the 5K. I gotta tell you, I love Run Disney. It's such a fun experience, everybody there together, having a great time, smiling, meeting wonderful characters, and everybody just kinda getting out there and enjoying life. It's such a great energy with everyone there. It's so, so much fun, and one that I highly recommend. This is not the first race I've done. I've done several of them at this point, and I love the 5K. As someone who's kinda working through an old injury, and someone who's not as experienced running, and I'm still working to get to that 10K level, I love the 5K, and it's great for those new runners like me, those who are recovering from injuries or those with families who want to bring younger ones. I saw a lot of younger ones for this race. So it was a, it's great for everybody and a, just a ton of fun. Race day actually begins a day before the 5K. If you do whether or not you're doing the 5K, 10K, whatever it is, it actually starts a day before the 5K officially begins. And this is the Expo. And this is tip number one of our five tips today about Run Disney you don't want to forget. Make sure you attend that Expo nice and early and get in line for those virtual queues and don't forget to sign the form. So it's like a multiple tip right there. Don't forget to sign that waiver. Everybody's got to sign the waiver. You know, you won't sue in case you get injured. We all know these kind of waivers. But you go in, you say, yeah, after the form is signed, whether it's done in advance or if you're there, and then you head on in and you get your bib. Once you do that, you make your way to get your race shirt. Now, the shirt is included with the price of your race. So everybody gets a shirt as long as you're racing one of the races, and then you make your way uh, on to uh, race day. So those are actually only two things that you need in order to race the bib and make sure you sign it in advance, the waiver, and that shirt. Now, of course, you don't have to wear that shirt on race day. A lot of people don't actually. It's, it's becoming more common for people to wear either older race shirts or just not a race shirt at all and just wear whatever they want and just keep the shirt at home. It really depends on the design of the shirt. The more popular designs definitely are worn more. I remember the Expedition Everest 5K, springtime surprise. A lot of people wore that shirt because it's such a great one. The one for Marathon Weekend was a neon yellow, which I think is good as a race shirt, but a lot of people you know, maybe don't like that color as much. I personally do like that color. I think it's nice, especially for racing, going out and jogging in the morning, but still, you know, some people like it, some people don't don't and that's okay and they keep switching up the colors for us now to get your race shirt you actually have to go to another building there's a three building process with this whole thing first one was for the race bib and the form second one is where you pick up that shirt and it's where you can find a lot of the exhibitioners there to sell you different merchandise they have everything from headphones to shoes for the sponsors they have some special kiosks where you can do something special win prizes just have a lot of fun and of course see the medals that are coming up for your race and for future races which is really cool i really appreciate that that where you can actually see the medal before you earn it. It's awesome. In recent years, there have been four races that happen throughout the year. The Marathon Weekend is usually one of the most popular ones at Walt Disney World. A lot of people show up for this event. Uh, it's a, great for the experienced runner or just for families, younger kids. Everybody can have fun during this event. And when you walk into the expo, you can definitely feel that same energy, those super experienced and those who maybe are the first race ever. I love walking around the expo, seeing all the different things that are available for purchase. You do not have to buy anything here, of course. The only thing that you have to do when you're at the expo is get that bib. If you don't have the bib on race day, you're not gonna be able to run, or you're gonna have to kind of go to information and they gotta fix something for you. But make sure, if you're going to run Disney, do not forget your bib. Once you walk to the back of the expo area, building two is what I'm gonna call it, where the exhibitioners are, you get your shirt, you tear off a little tag that was part of your bib and they take that in exchange for the shirt and then you can make your way for the merchandise. Now, Disney has changed how Run Disney merchandise is distributed, right? So in the past, you'd go, you'd line up and then you'd get merchandise. Now Disney is utilizing a virtual queue. This year, it was really, really long. It was a six and a half, maybe seven hour virtual queue to get in to look at merchandise. That is how long it is and they are 100% serious about making sure that people wait in that virtual queue. So if you're thinking about it, either log in the moment you can and get that virtual queue as we've shown in past videos, or if, you, you know, if you're not able to do that, just get a time and then show up at the appropriate time because they will not let you into this area to see merchandise until your time is called. So just be aware of that. They have a lot of great merchandise available for sale at the expo. A lot of things that are available just for this specific race. A lot of things that are available for just your race. Let's pretend you're doing the dopey, maybe you know just the dopey merchandise, that's great. 
or uh, just standard run Disney merchandise. They have a lot of good stuff available for sale. And of course, discounts do apply. DVC annual pass. You can get those discounts at the expo. Now, after you've purchased your merchandise, you make your way through the exit. You can use mobile checkout here, which I have found extremely helpful. And it does apply for your discounts as well. It's really, really nice, especially if the line is really long. It all depends on that line, of course. But once you exit, you can't re-enter. So don't step out until you're ready. Well, when you do exit, you'll find a really cool photo spot with different numbers for the corresponding race that you're running. 3.1 for the 5K, we've got 6.2 for the 10K, and so on. And during the marathon weekend, they did something a little different. They, they sometimes do this, but not very frequently. They have characters available for photo ops right there as you exit. Now, the line for these characters was extremely long. I mean, very long. A lot of people just standing by, ready to take those pictures. You can see them right there. Really nice to see, but again, super, super long line. Once you're done there, you make your way out of the expo and head off to wherever you want to go that night, but make sure you get lots of sleep because the next day is race day. And this brings me to tip number two, lots of sleep and hydration. This is absolutely critical. No matter which race you're running from the five, the 10, the half, the full marathon, whatever it may be, make sure you are hydrated and ready to go for that day. You want to bring something with you, whether it be like a water bottle or water bladder, whatever it is, have it with you so you are ready to go. On race day, I got there nice and early, but early is all dependent on your race. Now, right now, the races begin at 5 a.m. Now, this doesn't mean that you can get there at 5 a.m. and just start running. That's not how it works. You have to get there a little bit earlier just so that you can go through security and basically, I'm going to say walk at least a mile to get to the start of the race, which is very interesting. You do have to walk a bit just to make sure that uh, you go again, go through security and get checked in. Once you are through security and made it to the main meeting area, you'll see different photo ops. There's a DJ there, uh, just, a, just a lot of fun party atmosphere. They also have an information booth in case anything's wrong, something's wrong with the bib or any other questions you may have, and a gear check where you can check in your bag or any other things that you have. They will provide bags, I believe, as well, but it's basically just for the bag that you have so that you can just check it in and grab it after the race. They keep it all right there, have your ticket, and you're set to go. I have never utilized this before, but uh, friends I have have said that they've used it and they, you know, it works well. They just hang on to it for you and they give it right back. Now, it is early in the morning, three in the morning, but if you're looking for some food, they do have donut holes and kind bars and all sorts of good stuff that you can purchase. They also have a Joffrey's coffee truck that usually comes by, which is available for coffee, which is really nice. Now, you'll notice there are a lot of people in costume. Are costumes required? No, they are not. However, it definitely makes it a lot more fun. That being said, you want to make sure that your costume is light. You do not want a really heavy costume to be running around the parks with. You're going to be even more exhausted after this race. Unless you're highly experienced, I recommend a very, very light costume if you are going to wear one at all. This brings me to my third tip. Make sure you pack the appropriate clothing. That could mean the right costume, of course, but it also means rain gear because I've been rained out before, not out, but rained on as I ran through the race in the past. And let me tell you, it makes for a not so pleasant experience. You are just soaked, running around. Usually it's cooler on those days. It's just not my favorite way to experience the race. So it's just one of those things that you definitely want to be paying attention to. Make sure you bring the right clothing for the experience, whether it be the right layering, the rain gear, whatever it is, bring the right clothes. Now, when you're here, you have the opportunity to sit in those bleachers, kind of watch the DJ, or take pictures with your favorite character friends in unique outfits. I met Donald today. You'll notice though the line for Mickey in his special attire was unbelievably long. And a cast member told me that we probably wouldn't make it through the whole line by the time uh, we had a chance to meet Mickey, and you know he would be available after the race. That probably was true, but I did not meet Mickey uh, during this race. You have the opportunity, but you may have to meet him after the race, which he's available then too, which is really nice. Now, I do want to note the restrooms are Porta John, so it's something to consider. I wouldn't recommend using their hand sanitizer though, because it's it's really. I don't know, maybe cheap or sticky. It's not great hand sanitizer. Either bring your own or uh, use one of the restrooms that they have along the route. That's that's just something to pay attention to. When it's time to go, they won't make any big announcements. This is something that kind of threw me off the first couple times I went racing. You can go to the corral about an hour before the race officially begins. So it's about four in the morning. And you're able to walk through and join your corral. Now, your corral is actually designated based on your mile average time. So if you have a longer mile time, you'll be placed in one of the later corrals so that you're not 
not holding up traffic as everybody's running through together. I was in Corral C, usually is where I'm placed. Usually it's the it's the second to last. So there is a Corral D, but I was placed in Corral C, which is, which is good. They do confirm that you are in the right Corral when you go and join it, and you're basically just sitting there for about an hour, and this is brings us to tip number four, stretch, stretch, and continue stretching. This is actually how I got my injury, so don't make my mistake and don't stretch. You definitely want to stretch in advance of the race and after the race. That's something I had to learn the hard way. So you make sure that you are uh, set to go. 354 is when I started walking towards my corral, and I got a great spot right near the front of corral number, uh, or letter C, when I was there. Very convenient, just sat there for an hour and stretched, so don't forget to do that. Once your corral is called for start beginning the race, you don't start running off immediately. There's a long snaking line that you have to take in order to get to the start of the uh, of the race. So it's usually about 20, maybe 40 minutes. I've waited as long as 45 to actually start running from, from the initial start time. You'll notice there's a lot of people here. They try and entertain us as best they can with those hosts who are just kind of uh, t- telling jokes, telling people stories, sharing a lot with us. It's nice. Then they sing the national anthem, and we are just about ready to go. At the twilight's last gleaming. It's much more controlled than it used to be. A lot of people just kind of lining up together, and the cast members are there to make sure that we're not running off too early. They all start us off at a certain time, and you start snaking your way around till you get to the entrance. But once you are there in the starting line, you take off. It's a 3 two, one moment. The fireworks go off, and you start moving. Now, at the beginning of the race, you are going to want to try and kind of get ahead of the pack if possible. It just makes it a lot easier for you, so you're not just in the middle of the crowds the whole time. But you start making your way along the course. This is for the 5K, and you'll you'll notice a lot of people in costume just starting off with a light jog because it is so crowded right at the beginning, but it clears out later on. Talking specifically about the 5K here, the beginning part of the race is just around the parking lot, so you're just kind of walking or running or jogging through. Now this brings me to tip number five on our list. That is, make sure you choose the characters you want to meet very carefully. This is really, really important because when you're running, especially the 5K, you are on a very limited time schedule, right? So it's really important that you follow the time schedule. If you're in one of those later corrals, you're going to want to see the characters that are really important to you. Now, we don't know which characters are going to be out on any given race, but you want to make sure that you choose the character that you are most excited about. And being able to do that's tough because you have to kind of pass by characters that you know you'd love a photo with, but you think that there's possibly a better character along your route. So for example, for this race, Tarzan and Turk were right there at the entrance. The first characters, I did want to meet them, of course, but it was a super long line at that point, and I knew that if I met them, I probably wouldn't have too much time for other characters that I wanted to meet. So I just kind of waved at them and continued on. It was a really cool race that some of the uh, different cultural hosts were welcoming us as we made our way past Mexico here. But you'll notice right there in the center of World Showcase, the uh, the different barges are lit up with the marathon logo, which I thought was really nice. As I made my way through China, you'll notice there's Mushu right there. It would have been great to meet him as well. He's a great character to see. I've seen him on races before, but again, I decided to pass him by. This is another one of those tips. It's just, it's tough because you do want to meet him, but look at the size of this line. There's no way. If I stood in that line, I probably wouldn't be able to meet any other characters this whole race. Continued making my way through, and during the race, they'll give you some water to make sure you stay hydrated. And of course, we've spoken about it before. You will see the photographers out and about who do an incredible job taking those photos that we all love to share after the race. So don't be afraid to smile at the photographers. Those big lights will be a good indicator that uh, the photographers are right there and just about ready to snap your photo. A little bit of etiquette for the race that I think is really important. If you are running, stay to that left-hand side. If you are planning on walking or going slower, stay to the right-hand side. Just something to, to note. If you are planning on slowing down, make sure you raise your hand and start moving over to the right so that people know that you know to kind of pay attention because you're about to slow down so they don't crash into you. Really, really important there. Once I made my way to Canada, I found the characters that I wanted to do that picture with this time. It's Chippendale as the Rescue Rangers. I loved seeing them. A really great outfit from a fantastic show. Really long line, but absolutely worth it to see the characters in these outfits. So, so cool. Would definitely recommend it. Oh my gosh. Loved meeting those characters. It is a very quick photo. You got to go really fast when you're thinking about uh, getting these pictures for the run event. But if you 
getting those photos is definitely worth it. We took a little bit of a different course for the 5K this time. Instead of underneath Spaceship Earth, we went past the Jammeters and uh, Space 220 and Test Track and Mission Space. It was really cool to uh, go in this direction instead of what we're used to. Finishing strong is really important with the Run Disney race. Make sure you have enough energy left at the end so you can get that running photo if you want to, of course, not mandatory. At the very, very end, check your time and get that great picture. At the end of the race, they give you a banana, Powerade, water, and a little snack pack, which is really nice. And of course, don't forget your medal. You definitely want that medal. At the very end, of course, a lot of photographers waiting for your photo as you exit. I just love this one. I love the Run Disney races, and as you race more and more, you find that they're even more addicting and even more fun. You collect those medals and just have a great experience with friends. So, so much fun. If you love running Disney, let me know. And if you have any other tips to add to our tips, also let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for sharing in the run event with me today. Until next time, have a magical day. Oh,